Welcome to the Daily Dose of Derm podcast, your go-to podcast for all things dermatology. I'm Dr. Mohiba Tareen, a board-certified dermatologist and the founder of Tareen Dermatology. Join us as we dive into the fascinating world of skincare, beauty, dermatologic treatment, and how to enter the world of derm. Whether you're a skincare enthusiast or an aspiring medical professional, this podcast is your daily dose of knowledge and inspiration. Get ready to uncover the secrets to healthy skin and discover how to make a meaningful impact in the field. Hello, welcome back, everyone. I am your host, Shia Badham, and you're back here with the Daily Dose of Derm. Today, I'm here with Tori Kress. She is a previous medical assistant here at Turin Dermatology and is now a current ENT resident at the Mayo Clinic. Tori, thank you so much for being here. Of course. Thank you for having me. Yeah, I know you have a very, very busy schedule. You're in the thick of it all, but we really appreciate you being here. Of course. I'm happy to be. Absolutely. Could you just go ahead and just introduce yourself? Tell me about your background. What do people want to know? Yeah. (laughs) Of course, of course. I mean, I could talk forever about the whole process of getting to where I'm at now. I grew up in Minnesota and then I went to college in Texas. I grew up actually in a family of doctors, kind of my grandfather and my father are both pediatricians. So I grew up in a medical household, um, kind of always knew that I wanted to do medicine Mm. or kind of considered it. So when I went to uh, undergrad in Texas, I knew I wanted to do pre-med just because it's easier to start out pre-med and Mm -hmm. decide you don't want to do it as Mm -hmm. opposed to the other way around. And actually, interestingly, ended up with a double degree in chemistry and theater um, and my pre-med kind of focus, which was really fun. I could talk about that for a really long time, but uh, (laughs) it was just really fun to like balance my brain and see things kind of from a different perspective and to be able to have something creative to do when I was sick of like organic chemistry. Absolutely. Um, So that was super fun. And then I came back to Minnesota for my gap years. Mm -hmm. I was planning on taking one and actually didn't get into medical school the first time I applied. Mm -hmm. And so that was a little bit of a shock. And then worked here at Tureen Dermatology for a little less than a year and a half Mm -hmm. during the second half of my first gap year and my second gap year Mm -hmm. and got so much great experience and got into medical school the second time I applied and ended up going to medical school in Southern California, which was very fun and very warm. Loved that. Honestly, med school, again, I could talk about it forever, but I think it was four of the best years of my life. I loved it so much. And then I'm in my second year now of five of ear, nose, and throat head and neck surgery residency at Mayo. What's that like? Tell me about it. Oh, it's wild. Residency is... Not for the faint of heart, I would say that, but it's amazing. ENT is actually something that I went into medical school Mm -hmm. kind of set on doing. Mm -hmm. My dad had put together, hey, theater, singing, communication, that's really important to you. Why don't you shadow an ENT? And shadowed one at his group. Mm -hmm. And not only was it an awesome field that's both a little bit of medical and clinical and also surgical, which Mm -hmm. I love. I also shadowed a female ENT and I was like, wow. I could really see myself doing this. Mm -hmm. And the more and more I dug into the specialty and how nuanced and diverse and um, the skill sets and the type of patients you get to take care of, Mm -hmm. I tried my best to be swayed and do something that was not a five-year residency Mm -hmm. and wasn't surgical and would have maybe had a little bit better work-life balance at certain points of my life, but I just... I couldn't be swayed. I I absolutely love what absolutely. I do. Absolutely. That's incredible. So like walk me into like a day in the life of a resident. Like if you can describe one day, what does it kind of look like for you? Well, I could walk you through my day yesterday, I yeah, guess. I mean, do. each day yeah. is very different, uh-huh. um, especially as a junior resident. I, you know, kind of a typical week is a day or two of clinic a day or two of OR and then I take usually one 24 hour shift of call right now um, where I'm usually at the hospital from 7 a.m. to 7 a.m. and Mm -hmm. taking calls and consults from the emergency room or the floor for anything that's non-urgent to emergent Mm -hmm. which is great experience and calls tough but yeah, really rewarding sure. at times mm-hmm. so for instance yesterday i had an, an or day and mm-hmm. so i was helping out with the head and neck team so we we're taking out some head and neck tumors nice. and doing some neck dissections and then i took call overnight i think it was actually a pretty calm night okay. i'm a little bit of a white cloud yeah, so yeah. it was nice because i knew i was driving up here for this for sure. yeah, <laughs> so absolutely. got a little bit of sleep but um it's a really kind of a cool honor to be the the only ENT in the hospital overnight. That's awesome. Something happens, you know, you're, you're the it. Fr- you're it. You're the- um, from everything from a nosebleed to 
someone who can't breathe. Mm-hmm. And uh, thankfully, none of that happened last night. There we go. But <laughs> um, that was, you know, that's kind of a typical day, at least right now for yeah, me. Yeah, absolutely. So kind of circling back, mm-hmm. you know, you came here, you, you spent your gap year here at True yes. Dermatology. Um, who did you work with? What was your experience like? If you can kind of touch base. It like. was it was great. I actually had initially set up a job to work as a scribe Mm -hmm. with a different company during my gap year and was a little disappointed by not only the amount of hours they were assigning me Mm -hmm. but also just the lack of interaction Mm -hmm. I got with patients and really the lack of experience I felt like I was getting it just felt like a lot of routine and I just really wasn't learning that much and that was one of the goals of my gap year was to learn and to get mentorship and really figure out what I wanted to do And I had a friend who was working here that I ran into at Christmas time and she told me about her job and I was like, that is what I want to be doing. I want to be talking to patients and learning and participating Mm -hmm. and getting to understand what it's like to run a clinic and getting to actually know doctors that do things that I might want to do. And so when I started... I think I worked with the PAs for a little while. I think a lot of them have actually not, they're not here anymore, but yeah. uh, a couple of them still are. I think Kelsey's still here. Yeah, she's still here. She's amazing. And then I also worked quite a lot with Dr. Tureen. Nice. So I worked with her quite, quite closely. Mm-hmm. Um, and it was amazing getting to do everything. When I tell people what we get mm-hmm. to do or got to do here during my gap year, it put me leagues ahead of most yeah. of my classmates in medical school of knowing how to take a history, mm-hmm. knowing how to do a physical exam. Right which is a huge skill set mm-hmm. that takes a long time for a lot of people yeah, to learn. Right. Knowing how to communicate with somebody when there's good news, bad news, mm-hmm. learning how to assist in procedures, write notes, schedule things. I mean, we do the, you guys, well, I am not here anymore, but you guys <laughs> yeah, no, do hear, the yeah, whole it's... breadth of things. And it's such a fantastic experience and mm-hmm. sets people up for, I think, success no matter what they decide mm-hmm. to do, whether it's medical school, PA school, nursing, or lit- any career. It's such an important way to know how to talk to people in their most vulnerable state, mm, um, which is a lot of times at the doctor. Yeah, of um, course. And I, I cannot credit the experience that I had here enough with setting me up for success yeah, in my career. Absolutely. Yeah, I couldn't agree more. I mean, for me, this was like my first clinical experience mm-hmm. almost. And to to be at the comfort level that I'm at now, you yeah. know, year two, working directly with Dr. Tree, and it, I definitely, I, I do feel like I could possibly be leagues ahead of my peers, possibly well, in grad school. You, and you will str- be. Yeah, from these experiences here at absolutely. this job. So I couldn't agree more there. Um, coming back to just kind of your experience mm-hmm. in ENT, mm-hmm. talk to me about kind of the some of the challenges, the major challenges with you know ENT or whether you find it whether it's kind of whether it's mainly you find it to be a challenge for you or maybe if it's a broadly known challenge within ENT mm-hmm. what are some of those things kind of pros and cons with that specialty oh, I guess absolutely so one way I describe ENT because a lot of people think of ENT doctors as we like clean out earwax and do tubes and tonsils which oh, we do yeah. a lot of that but really we are the head and neck specialists so mm-hmm. pretty much everything above the clavicles that's not the eyeballs mm-hmm. thank goodness <laughs> um the brain also thank goodness and yeah. the spine also thank goodness yes. i don't want to deal with those three things <laughs> um but i mean that's everything from voice and swallowing mm-hmm. to airway things to sinus surgery and ears and facial plastics and pediatric mm-hmm. ent um, cleft lip and palate is also within our scope and so it's this People think of ENT and they don't think, I mean, honestly, I don't know that I recognized how truly broad it was until I got, I was already kind of hooked. Yeah. So that's really, it's a really cool aspect, but it's Mm -hmm. also a lot to learn. Mm -hmm. And one, I would say, exciting challenge is also how broad the scope of our surgical procedures are. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's big open procedures where, you know, we're taking out cancer Mm -hmm. and rebuilding someone's face Mm -hmm. sometimes to really you know finesse rhinoplasties to working under a microscope Mm -hmm. uh, in the ear and drilling away the bone of the ear Mm -hmm. or working in a microscope and working on someone's voice box where you're taking a three millimeter biopsy of Mm -hmm. a vocal cord which is with instruments that are this long to working with endoscope like working with one hand with an endoscopic telescope in the sinuses and using your other hand to open up someone's sinuses i mean it's just this huge range of Mm -hmm. different skill sets Mm -hmm. that again I don't know that I fully grasped until I was like already in the thick of it 
but it's and it's a little intimidating. It's like, wow, that's a lot to learn. Right. But it makes it really exciting mm-hmm. and really cool to say, like, we are the experts. There's like no one else who knows how to do yeah. this, Absolutely. which is really cool. Mm-hmm. But sometimes a little frustrating in the hospital setting where sure. people are like, what is an ear? Right, right. I don't know what an ear is. Please help. <laughs> and you're like, OK, yep, that's my job. Yep. Like, I'm here to help not only the, educate the patients and take care of them, but also take it on myself if I can. and I have the time to like mm-hmm. educate other members of the hospital team to say like, hey, this is what I would do. This is how to manage this if like we're not available or if you're in a situation where you don't have ENT. Mm -hmm. So I think a lot of the challenges are also kind of cool benefits. Like they're exciting challenges. Absolutely, yeah. Out of all the, you know, grotesque procedures that you get to (laughs) do, is there one procedure where it's just like, man, that is so satisfying to do. That is so satisfying (sighs) to complete, remove. Like, do you have there's like so something many. weird? Yeah. Do you I have... love at this point. I mean, there's I'm only in my second year of residency. Okay. I've got quite a while to yeah. go mm-hmm. and I haven't figured out what I want to do quite yet. Mm-hmm. We're getting there. Sure, sure. Um, But taking out a thyroid is really, really satisfying. Yeah. It's so cool. And taking out like the lymph nodes in um, someone's neck. To, it's called the neck dissection where you literally are dissecting out the lymph nodes yeah. in the neck and finding all the important structures and leaving those there and mm-hmm. taking them out. They're very satisfying. That's amazing. They're pretty cool. They're pretty it. cool. So say I am aspiring to be an ENT mm-hmm. specialist. What is like the best advice you could give me, especially with me starting this journey? Yeah, of course. I would say it's so hard. I think in general with anybody aspiring to go into anything in medicine, but especially something that is classically deemed as competitive i don't love that word because i feel like it's overused Mm -hmm. but is to find really good mentorship Mm -hmm. and that doesn't necessarily always have to be in the exact specialty that you're going into but finding someone who will tell you when something's a bad idea when something is you know not going to put you in the position that Mm -hmm. you need to be in someone who will you know if it's a research mentor who will really actually you know, encourage and push things forward as opposed to you having to do all of it. So finding good mentorship, yeah. and whether it's clinical, surgical, surgical research, mm-hmm. all of that. And then just really like getting experience. Yeah. And not only in just what you want to do, but really seeing, trying to see the full broad range of mm-hmm. things. Because I think a big part of picking a specialty, especially for us, you know, MDs and DOs that kind of have to pick one and mm-hmm. then we're sort of stuck doing it. Right. Um is not only finding what you really like, but also recognizing the mundane kind of parts Mm -hmm. of each specialty and saying like, am I going to be happy still doing this on kind of the the down days? Mm -hmm. You know, I might love certain aspects of one specialty, but if I hate Mm -hmm. the mundane aspects of that specialty and I'm going to be unhappy, Mm -hmm. I think that that's a really wise thing to take into consideration. And so getting experience, finding good mentorship Mm -hmm. and getting involved is, is, important for any specialty but especially something like ENT where a lot of people don't get exposed to it Mm -hmm. and there's a lot of people that I meet or I met through medical school or I meet in residency who are like I never had an ENT rotation because it's not required Mm -hmm. and they said like I wonder if I would have really liked it I wonder if I really would have wanted to do that but I never got exposed to it Mm -hmm. and so if it's something that maybe interests you just fine most ENTs are pretty nice yeah. we're pretty we're pretty cool pretty people. chill for the most part um, yeah. I, I mean that's another big part of it is find your people yeah okay. find the people that you're going to be okay spending well in residency like 80 hours a week with yeah, sometimes sure. that's super important no matter what you're going into yeah. and ENT were just the people that I said like yep I, I fit here mm-hmm. this right. not only do I love this specialty I love these people I love these patients and It all worked out. I'm pretty grateful. That's amazing. That's amazing. So kind of going into just overall Mm -hmm. balancing life while in Mm -hmm. residency, Mm -hmm. um, walk me through kind of what is it like trying to maintain overall your just personal well-being while Mm -hmm. obviously going through just a crazy rigorous, you know, time in your life and your career. Any challenges for you that you've had to go through and had to really kind of hone in on? Oh, yeah. Tell me about it. Oh, it's so it's tough. I'm so grateful. I am an hour and a half from my family. Mm -hmm. And that has been a huge help in residency. I would recommend that anybody who wants one to get a a dog. Uh, My dog (laughs) has gotten me through med school and residency so far. And I actually some of the best advice I got from my dad before starting medical school was you have to have a hobby. Mm. Like you have to lean into things that make you you Mm -hmm. because it's so easy to lose it in med school. And setting boundaries is super important. There's no way to know it all. Mm -hmm. 
in any field of anything, I think, but especially in medicine, there's this feeling that you can memorize everything and you can get by by root memorization and you there's some way to like know these whole textbooks and I kind of think that's impossible Mm -hmm. a lot more of it is being able to understand the big concepts and be able to apply your knowledge and understand where things fit in Mm -hmm. there's a reason we have the internet there's a reason we have colleagues there's a reason we have research that you can use in normal practice you may not be able to use on a test but tests aren't everything Mm -hmm. and so setting boundaries of like hey in med school for instance I for the most part stopped studying at eight mm-hmm. and I was like I need to have a couple of, an hour or two before I go right. to bed to wind down and just Decompress, stop right stop because at, there's there's a point of somewhat diminishing returns especially for my my mental health mm-hmm. and if I'm not taking care of myself and exercising and eating well and hanging out with my friends and sleeping mm-hmm. and all of that I can't take appropriate care of other people absolutely and so leaning into hobbies leaning into friends and family is not always easy to do because it's kind of hard to set boundaries, yeah. but once you do, it makes a league of difference. Absolutely. That's mm-hmm. amazing advice overall. Can you go into any memorable like stories about maybe being a patient, something that really left a mark on you in terms of you know that experience, anything mm-hmm. that really like significantly had an impact on you that you hold dear? Yeah. I mean, I, of course, can't go into any course, specifics right. HIPAA, because HIPAA and all of that. I think what really comes to my mind, especially I have a really unique program Mm. that's very different than pretty much any other surgical training in the country. Mm. Mayo's surgical residencies are an apprenticeship model. Mm. Pretty much I go to clinic with my uh, attending consultant and I go to the OR with them. So I'm their resident uh, for like 10 weeks Mm. at a time. And so what's really cool is to see a patient go from clinic beforehand do their surgery Mm -hmm. and where I am the assisting Mm -hmm. surgeon, you know, taking care of them primarily in the hospital and then sometimes even seeing them in follow up or having, you know, even when I'm off service, having the consultant I was with say, hey, this patient came back to clinic and like they're doing so good. Like Mm -hmm. you did such a good job. And being able to actually see that whole arc is really, really cool. And just being able to sit with people in their most vulnerable moments. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't think anyone's more more vulnerable or more probably scared than they are of than course. they were going into surgery. Right. For me, surgery is something I do every day. Mm-hmm. I've done tons of surgeries. I mean, when I'm you know fully in charge, I'll have done even more. Right. And so surgery is kind of a normal thing for me. Mm-hmm. But for most people, it's the first Scary. and only time they're right. going to ever have surgery. To have someone trust me with that mm-hmm. and trust my team to take care of them is... I, I don't think I'm ever going to get over that. Yeah, no, absolutely. Yeah. It, could you, if you could articulate just the overall, as a provider, mm-hmm. the privilege and mm-hmm. responsibility of, you know, your position and how that feels. Mm-hmm. Could you articulate that and just kind of describe that for, for those that maybe have absolutely yeah. no idea what it's like being a healthcare provider, being a healthcare worker? Mm-hmm. How would you kind of, if you could? It's, it's so interesting. Because, like I said, people trust you with, like, their lives. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you're like, why me? Like, why? how did (laughs) I get to this point? Like, why am I so, like, lucky to get to take care of somebody Mm -hmm. like this? I think especially since I started my residency, actually being able to do something. As a med student, you get to do some things. You get to participate. But the fact that when I go see a patient after surgery and I ask, you know, what can I do to make you more comfortable tonight? Yeah. And they are either having difficulty with pain or they're having heartburn or something like that. And I can just pull up my phone and write an order for it and I can do that for mm. them. It's It seems so routine mm-hmm. and mundane, but sometimes even those like little moments where I'm just like, I actually get to do this. Yeah. And I actually get to make an active difference in people's mm-hmm. lives. Medicine is a really hard thing to do too because there's a lot of sadness in Mm -hmm. it too and a lot of loss not only you know of my personal time and Mm -hmm. finances and you know my 20s but you know patients there's not always great news for Mm -hmm. patients especially for ENT I think what really sucked me into the specialty and keeps me going is being able to help people communicate better Mm -hmm. because I think that the way that we as humans communicate is really what makes us most Mm -hmm. human our ability to 
whether it's talk, sit and have a meal at a restaurant to hear, to breathe Mm -hmm. through our noses or through our mouths. Like Mm -hmm. all of that is like so just basic. Mm -hmm. But when it goes away, it makes people not able to show up in the, um, you know, in the way that they want to in the world and to be able to be a part of, you know, hopefully getting them one step further to being able to show up in the way they want to in the world is it's a huge honor. Absolutely. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. So going kind of, you know, shooting towards the future mm-hmm. here, where do you kind of see yourself um, in terms of, you know, after residency, right? Mm-hmm. The overall future of otolaryngology, like mm-hmm. where do you, where do you see yourself evolving into, you know, your career? It's a fantastic question. I would love <laughs> to answer that yeah. if I knew. I think there's a very high likelihood that I'll do fellowship after Amazing. residency. So residency for ENT is five years, mm-hmm. and then I would likely do one additional year of training to nice. further subspecialize. Mm-hmm. I really love medical education. Mm-hmm. I love kind of where residency training, I think, is going and, and can continue to go. Mm-hmm. I love teaching and getting to be a part of all of that process. And so I, at this point, see myself probably working in an academic center of some point, Amazing. of some sort, yeah. um, at least for some portion of my career and working with medical students and residents mm-hmm. and hopefully even like PA students yeah. and things like that and really just getting to help build up a culture of um, curiosity yeah. and you know safe patient care and um, empathy and wellness as well as really good medicine yeah for sure. and surgical care don't quite know what that's going to look like yeah, yet i would love sure. to answer that and hopefully i'll have an answer for myself absolutely. at some yeah. point keep me posted keep me posted <laughs> love to hear from you absolutely posted. could you could you shed any light on like any latest whether it's advancements breakthroughs throughout the field overall that like really excite you like mm-hmm. other has there been any tremendous breakthrough in terms of any like surgical aspect of the field any anything like that i don't know i don't know AJ, so <laughs> I mean, there probably are i'm still uh, just trying to like catch up on you know <clears throat> the basics, the basics yeah. a little bit <laughs> i think but there's a really big push i think in medicine in general but especially in surgical subspecialties and mm-hmm. ent is one of one of the ones that's really focusing on like medical education and resident education resident wellness, resilience, you know, retention, Mm -hmm. um, making sure that we are creating an environment where a diverse group of people can thrive in practice. Mm -hmm. So that's diversity of background, mental health, Mm -hmm. like women, people who want to have families, all of that is so important because to be able to take care of the diversity of patients that Mm -hmm. we take care of, we need to have a diverse group of people that provide care. Absolutely. And so to be able to create uh environments in which that is possible i think there's a lot of push towards you know diversity inclusion equity Mm -hmm. um resident wellness and that's something that i find really important because the field's not gonna advance if we can't keep people Mm -hmm. and you know if we can't get people through residency and Mm -hmm. we can't keep people in medicine because it's it's really hard but um it's really important to support people and make sure that the people who want to do this and who feel called to do this Mm -hmm. can do this and also show up in their own lives. Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, Kind of amidst your busy schedule already, Mm -hmm. um, is there any sort of resource that's provided, whether it's provided to you or something you keep up with Mm -hmm. that has really all kind of major developments, research within the field or Mm -hmm. just medicine in general? Mm -hmm. Is there anything that you kind of, you know, go to as a, uh, you know, as a resident, like, oh, like, I need to go check this out. Like, what's going on in my field right now? Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, there's lots of uh, journals. Mm -hmm. I think journals are a really great place to go. Going to conferences is really Mm -hmm. fun, Um, not only because you get to network and see other people that, you know, are in your same position, but it's a really great place. I'm such a, like a, tactile learner like I love actually being there and hearing people talk about it yeah. sometimes reading a paper makes me want to fall asleep yeah. <laughs> um, or reading a book but For actually sure. getting to listen there's a lot of um, great podcasts mm-hmm. uh, there's a source resource that was initially out of Mayo one of my um, consultants actually helped create it called head mirror um, okay. and so not only do they have kind of some 
like a survival guide for being on call. Essentially, mm -hmm. they have a video atlas mm -hmm. of different surgical procedures. I'm also very lucky. A lot of those are my consultants doing yeah, those yeah. because a lot of it's based at Mayo. And so and not only am I seeing the procedure, but I'm usually seeing it how it's going to be done the next day. Go. It's a really fantastic resource for anybody that's either rotating through ENT, interested in learning about ENT. And it kind of there's a lot of resources for medical students, residents, all that. And they also have a podcast called mm -hmm. Head Mirror ENT in a Nutshell. That's mm -hmm. really great where they bring on experts and talk about not only, you know, the basics of ENT, but then also the breakthroughs. So those Amazing. are, that's a really great resource yeah. for anybody who wants to learn a little bit more about ENT or for is going sure. into it. Yeah, absolutely. So just to kind of overall mm -hmm. reflect on, you know, your journey as mm -hmm. a resident, um, as a medical student, was there any defining moment or achievement for you that made mm -hmm. you realize like, yeah, I'm that, I'm that girl. Yeah. Like <laughs> I did that. Yeah. I think... I think my match day might go down as like the greatest day of my life yeah. for a lot of people who don't. I mean, I'll try to try to mm -hmm. explain it. Match day is like you pick a specialty, you apply to, mm -hmm. I applied to like 70 or 80 programs mm -hmm. and then you interview at a handful and then you make a ranked ordered list. That's pretty much saying I will agree to go to any of these places mm -hmm. and move there for five years of right. training, but you don't know how, but then it goes into an algorithm that takes each program's rank list and your rank list and you match. And if you match, you match into one place mm. and you get a letter that says, here's where you're moving. <laughs> it is the most stressful it sounds experience stressful. ever. Yeah. But opening up my letter, I still sometimes, I we just had match day for you know our new class a couple of weeks ago. Mm -hmm. And I love all things about match day. I think yeah. it's just so emotional and wonderful for, sure. for most people. For me, it was all very positive. And I went back and watched my match video and just bawled. Yeah. Um, and just opening up that letter and seeing like all of the work that I put in mm -hmm. and this dream that I had had for, you know, four years of being an ENT. Mm -hmm. And then it, also the fact that I got to come home mm -hmm. and be closer to home and train at somewhere like Mayo. Mm -hmm. It's still, still honestly flabbergasting to yeah, me that absolutely. I get to do that, that I get to do what I've set my mind out to do. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm just very grateful for it every yeah. day. Who was the first person you told? Who are you so Oh, my family was all there. It's like a okay. whole big ceremony. Yeah. I, oh. yeah, my parents, it was, my parents were there with me and then, you know, all my friends and my, my okay. entire class and all of their families and everything. But yeah, yeah my parents, um, and then immediately, I think my brother was on FaceTime because he was up here in Minnesota oh, and then gosh, immediately yeah. called my best friend and told her and yeah whole entourage was there oh it was it. yes it was it was amazing that's amazing <laughs> well with that we'll go ahead and close out our conversation cool. thank you so much again for being of here of course for thanks for having your me inside your love and experience uh for the listeners out there thank you so much for being here again stay curious stay inspired i'm your host shia badham and this is the daily dose of durham